from left to right. It will be St. John's in the white jerseys with the red, gray helmets. They will be going right to left. Chase Patterson on the face off against Mavlios. We are underway from Queens. Patterson wins it at center. What a great win to start out there from Patterson. As he still has it. As he's going one on one, but. For Patterson, he was big in that LIU game for Hofstra last week, keeping possession and helping to that 8-0 run they won in the first quarter. So they head to the far side here for Hofstra. It will be in Justin Sykes with it from Oakville, Ontario. He has it with his right hand. Sykes curls back, finds Gerard Kane. He gets hit off the ball there by number 37, Bobby Seal. Kane now spins back. Nice move by Kate the St. John's logo. Fakes the pass. He's so good at that. Now in front of shot score. It's a goal there for John Madsen. And Hofstra gets the goal just 49 seconds into this one. And there goes Gerard Kane being a facilitator for this Hofstra team. He's been going back and forth with John Madsen all season. And that's a big goal for the Hofstra Pride. Yeah. You heard during that possession when Gerard Kane had that lost ball. Immediately, St. John's loud. They get it going here. It's Mangan. Back up top to Duffy. Near side here is Wasimski. Wasimski gets the pass over. Now far side shot, score! In the goal there, it's Kalmus, and this game is tied. How does Kalmus find himself that wide open? No one in the vicinity of him. I'd say the only player close was Dalton. To 50 points, but Duffy has it here. Now on the far side, it'll be St. John's working it around. Here is a pass in front, shot, score! Cutting yeah. in, it's Zuhowski. And there it is. It is the official record tying play there for Brian Kelly. A no look pass as he found Zuhalski just cutting through this Hofstra zone. And again, that is a record there for Brian Kelly. 50 points. We see a replay. Good pass and even better goal for this St. John's team. And just as we said, Hofstra had a chance to the pass over Jones again, low to high. And that is sent wide. And they're going to say reset the shot clock there. And Hofstra will still have it with a fresh 60. Yeah, I think that got saved by Munson. Is it looked like it changed direction. In front shot, score! Colton Rudd, 3-2. Hofstra with 7.15 left to go in the first. There it is, a pass right in the middle again on that first shot attempt. I think it was saved by Munson. That's why they got that yep. shot reset. And we see a replay here. Just It's a good bit of passing for the Hofstra Pride as they're able to find a cutting Colton. Almost, and he does pick up the loose ball as it went right to the stick of Corey Kale. And Hofstra now have a clearing attempt. Good layers provided there by this Hofstra Pride team. And we go into this game. Hofstra has the lead. Ford in tries again for the long field goal. He does. Tom Ford's got two. I Unbelievable. Mean, it's tough to get these stats in when Tom Ford just wants to get over that midfield line and rip shots. That's his second goal of the game. That's a career high in goals for Tom <laughs> Ford. And we do not expect to see long stick guys scoring in that way. And the Hofstra bench immediately getting out and getting animated here as not often do you see something like that. Pinpoint accuracy early in this one. Hofstra gets it over the line, nice job. It sees to the near side for Trey Parks. And also on that cause sooner for the pride, Luke Mannion got himself right into yep. the action, nearly was able to get it back and with a wide open Hofstra net. So the pride will start it here on the far side up top now with it is Ryan Sheridan, Matt Madsen, Takes it down the far side alley. Now behind the net, Madsen. To Parks, straight Parks to the freshman. Behind for Hofstra. Parks now to the left, 140 to go. He goes to the right now. Sends it up top. Here's a chance, a shot, score! That might have knuckled in, but it's gonna be a goal for Matt Elder. Yeah, I think that might have hit someone in front. I can't tell exactly. See, this Patterson has been in the circle, and they threw a lot at him against LIU. They were going with long poles. They were going with guys who are not generally known for being face-off winners, and he was able to just make the adjustments for anyone who they threw at him, and he utterly dominated all afternoon. Sykes gets it back out top. It goes off the stick of Malika, and now a break the other way for St. John's. Coming down the middle, it's Bobby Seal. Seal coming in, near side, Kelly shoots, scores! A goal there from Brian Kelly, his fifth of the year, a big one off the pass by Seal. But that starts with a turnover by Hofstra. To right, and they'll start with it here up top for Griffin Turner. Turner to the far side for Justin Sykes. Sykes now cutting around the outside. Got to stick up high, Sykes back with it. Now a low to high shot, score! 
It's Rory Jones, and it's six to three. What a goal there from Rory Jones off that feed from Justin Sykes, as that is a favorite shot of him. He loves going with an underhand. That is going to be huge because Hofstra is going to be rested on defense as opposed to St. John's being a little bit more on the tired side. So Griffin Turner now with it for Hofstra. Griffin Turner takes it down low, flips it back out top. Rory Jones with the right-handed will now take the shot. Score! It's Rory Jones, 7-3 Hofstra. That shot just beat Kyle Munson. Can't tell from our angle whether or not he was screened on that. You see a replay here, but it just looked like it just beat him. Yeah. That's a tough goal to give up if you're Kyle Munson. And Roy Jones now has back-to-back -back for the pride. Is that one? Rudd back out for Sykes. Back to Rudd. Down low. It's Jones back to Rudd. Hofstra working around Natalie to the far side. Natalie back with it. Here's Sykes sent it in front. Malika underhanded shot. Bounced it. Hofstra's going to get there, and it will stay with them as the penalty will expire in three seconds. So... The Pride cannot get anything there on the man advantage. Then in the middle, Malika underhanded score! Anthony Malika, eight to three. That's a beautiful feed there by Colton Rudd to find Malika. And on that first shot, you said it was a bound shot that he took. Not a choice yeah. bound shot as he was getting taken to the ground there. But again, finds himself wide open in the middle. And that's exactly where they played him on the man up. It's just him coming off that. Reset here up top, Griffin Turner. To the left hand, cuts to the left. Turner now trying to spin around his man as he has Seal on him. Send it behind, kept alive by Madsen. In front, quick stick score! It's Justin Sykes in front. How about the feed from John Madsen? And that's going to make it a 9-3 to three game. A tic-tac goal there for the Hofstra Pride to take that 9-3 to three lead. You see a replay of it. Quick passing goes back to Madsen. And Madsen finds Sykes with a toe drag swag to keep off that crease violation. Offside's the call against the Pride. They only had two over the line. And it's going to be back with St. John's. As Ford went over, somebody else, I, uh, I believe it was, Corey Kale went over with him. One of them had to stay back, but Ford was in battling for the ball. So behind here for St. John's, it was a pass from Zahalski to Kelly. Kelly back with it. 120 left to go. Kelly jump shot off the side of the net. Oh, it's in. They score. Kelly put it in. It went in. Hofstra thought it went on the side. I believe Matt Gates did as well, but that one is in. And Kelly's got his second of the game. A lot of space, but Hofstra, their, their mortal enemy so far early in this season has been the post. Multiple times and quite twice here today. Madsen on the far side will get it behind to X. Two back there, including Jones and Rudd. Behind to Rudd, here is Sykes. Back up top, Malika. Malika, now to Jones, has wide open space. Coming around, he'll look again. Madsen a shot, score! Sean Madsen makes it 10 to four. And good offense there from the Pride. Great piece of passing there for this Hofstra Pride of offense. And we look at it, as we said, Gerard Kane has not impact. Jones coming around. Now here is Malika. Malika down low. Behind. Hofstra now set Rudd over to Jones. Back up top. Turner. Madsen. John Madsen cuts around. Has a possible lane, but will back it up here at five to go to the shot. They got it quick here. Here's a shot score. A high bounce there from Colton Rudd. And it's 11 to four. Hey, for Colton Rudd, a Shot awkwardly there as he's falling away from the goal. Has to take it sidearm and just bounces it at a right spot. We see a replay here. You see coming across and that bounce completely takes Kyle Munson. Patterson continues to be a huge factor in this one as he has now won 12 total faceoffs. So probably will slow it up here. Back up top, it's Griffin Turner. Turner has 60 in the shot clock here. Griffin Turner. With the right-handed stick, will now come around. Now to go to the left, shoots, scores! Griffin Turner was left all alone, it's 12-4. And now the Pride start to just pile it on here. As normal, we see the, we always see the huddles for both attack and defense after that, but this defensive huddle for the Red Storm starting to get a lot more dire. As we talked about it, those face- It's Griffin Turner. 
Turner with one on him. That being Seal. Turner cutting around. Now the shot here. Score! Rory Jones again, 13 to four. And again, it's the same thing for the Hofstra Pride. Quick passing, finding the open man. And this is an easy timeout that you gotta call if you're... Pratt over the line, now signs at far side for Kalmus. Kalmus trying to pass it in front, that's broken up, and Hofstra will have to turn over the other way. Back over the line, Griffin Turner has a wide open lane, possible three on one here, Malika from his knees, scores! Malika from his knees! It's 14 to four. What a goal there by Anthony Malika. What a pass to find him also. Griffin Turner, but Malika goes down on his knees, as you said, and it's just a tightrope He faked high, he too. He fakes high, and then he goes low. He goes back high with it, but what a play. We talk about him. But here, as they're working around, trying to get across the line, and he does get a pass to Danny DeSanti. DeSanti switches hands, switches back to his other hand, now gets a quick pass, now cutting in. Here's Madsen, behind the back pass, shot, score! What a beautiful pass by Madsen! And it's a goal there for Matt Elder! And it's now an 11 goal game. You wanna talk about how beautiful a pass there for Madsen is he just really oh. gets Danny DeSanti to run to him. Beautiful backhanded pass, we see the replay. The left there of, of Hofstra's Richie Hickis. Trying to curl it back around, center cross in front, shot, score! Wide open in front for St. John's. It's Connor Kelmus with his second of the game, and it's 15 to five. Yeah, same different, or same goal there for Connor Kalmus. Point blank opportunity, just hits off the edge of that giant goal basket. Just about one minute to go here. You're just about to hit one minute to go as they continue to work on Mangan. Working it over, Mangan gets it back. Takes a shot, blocked in front. St. John's will keep it in with Kelly. They have 35 to go in the shot clock, about a 20 second discrepancy between game and shot clock. Kelly has Hickis on him. He'll cut to the right with Hickis. Curls back the other way. Player back door. Kelly looking across. Here's a shot by Duffy, scores! That's a great play there by St. John's. It's Sean Duffy. Cuts the lead to nine. It is now 15 to six. Well, right there, if you're Brian Kelly, that's a pick your poison as you had two players wide open in front of the net or in that back door. You had your lacrosse coming over, bleeding into the March Madness area as well. It's starting to feel like spring too with the weather today also. <laughs> yeah, definitely today. Coming around the far side is Trevor Natalie. Natalie looking for his options. Natalie, a native of Stewart, Florida, so he's probably not used to this weather today. Fake shot there by Malika, fake shot, score! That was beautiful by Malika, oh baby! Pretty, pretty goal there by Anthony Malika going one-on-one, -on -one. gets the defender to fall, and he just wide open, sends that thing five hole on Kyle Munson, and we're back to a 10-goal lead for the Osh Pride. We see a replay of it again, gets the defender to fall, Wide open, plenty of game. gets himself on the score sheet for other than a save. Well, the Hofstra Pride bench already hyped up as he, as, with, with him trying that as Duffy takes it down low. Duffy now curls it back. Up top there for number two in Mejica. In front shot, score! Another one there, have a day, Connor Kalmus. It's a hat trick there for Connor Kalmus who keeps finding himself these great skip passes to the interior. He has two goals on the back door. That time, they find him cutting as we see here and just able to slot it in over. Going on a complete young is. Yeah, Vite as well comes Vite in. Vite stays in, Malika is gonna be in. So that's a young offensive unit for this Pride team. Clearly, you can tell what the intentions from head coach Seth Tierney, assistant coaches John Gorman and Mike Gongas are. Just get these young guys Shot in. and a goal. There's a goal there for Zahoski, and it makes it 16-8. Still, it's now an eight goal game. Not as close as I was saying. Hofstra starting to get their young guys in. Got to imagine that St. John's wants to potentially take advantage of some young and experienced guys. But right now, trying to see what they can get for their offense. It's now got to be Garvin before it got to him. So he was unable to get number four as we remain 17-18.
Kelly comes around the far side, shoots and scores. He's got a hat trick now. So him and Kelmis have the two hat tricks for St. John's. It's now 16 to nine. Edit. Want to see him coming out of that X position and just taking shots. He is able to use his speed. Hofstra a bit slow in their coverage. And it's now a full minute Again, as for I, St. John's. As I was saying, for this Hofstra team, it's just, this is your audition right now for Coach Tierney. Find a way to get yourself in these starting rotations. Behind now, send in front of shot, score! It's a goal there for Zahowski. Pass attempt from Brian Kelly, who throughout it all has really played strong despite having a bit of a lull in the middle portion. He's come back strong in this fourth quarter. St. John's can have two successful possessions. You bring everybody back out. Yeah. You gotta bring everyone back out because right There's now. There's a shot, they score! It's a goal for St. John's. They make it a five goal game. And it is Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly, fourth goal of the game. As I was saying, we are one goal away from what I would say is the limit for this Pride team to really bring their starters back in. We already are seeing one portion of it as Chase Patterson's going back to that face-off X. And has now hit down there for Hofstra Woods, Huffnagel. It's still loose, now picked up by St. John's, but the pass is low. In over the line, coming with it is Quine. Jackson Quine, two long sticks over the line. Here's a chance, a shot. Bounced wide, now behind the net. Sent in front, a shot, they score! It's a four goal game now with 102 left to go. This game's getting closer, right? And yeah, now you're starting to see yeah, the Santis the coming Santis back out. coming back in. Barry's still in on that face off help, but if you go back to that goal, we see a replay of it and just fakes and hesitations on this point of three with a big 16 to 12 victory. Closer, it was closer than it looked towards the end of the game, but a nice win for Steph Tierney and company. Yeah, especially on that last attempt there, a lucky draw for Matt Gates, who was turning around to face the potential comeback of a shot, and it hit him on the back of that stick, dropped dead. It had a very dangerous chance to make its way in the net, able to fall on it as he just sends it out to a teammate, and they just killed time. But for Hofstra, a struggle in this one to kill time throughout as this game got a lot closer, as you said, than it really had a chance to be. And at one point with that 10 goal lead for the Hofstra Pride, a lot of garbage time goals for St. John's, but that's what we saw. Once that those goals started to fall for them and the chances started to get in their favor, they were a dangerous team. But for the Red Storm, unfortunately, it only it, they had to wait until the fourth quarter and they were down.